are you dressed as? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Jokes. Yes. Um, okay, I have a comment and a question. The um, comment is just, I normally have a really hard time picking favorites of anything, music, movies, anything, but I was recently asked in a survey, who is your favorite fictional character ever? And Kaylee Fry was just right off the bat. So thanks, thanks for that. Thank um, you. You're welcome. <laughs> and um, my question is on the killing. I know one of your first few lines of dialogue was something about the word serenity, and I know it um, later played into the plot. So I was wondering, is that just a weird coincidence, or was it something you suggested? How did that come about? It's a complete coincidence. Really? And I know people don't believe me, <laughs> but it really was. The writer who, uh, who wrote my first episode on the killing uh, wasn't really familiar with Firefly or Serenity. Um, and someone in the production office told her and said, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> you know the reference, right? Um, so yeah, it was, it was a, a complete fluke, funny yeah. enough. Cool, thanks. Thank you. Hello. Hi, how are you? Oh God, Good. I sound horrible. No, you don't. <laughs> Um, I guess my question would be, what was your favorite part of working on Stargate? I actually watched Stargate before I saw Firefly. I'm going to get, you know, mobbed here. Uh -oh. in a I'm going to get lynched. But Security! So that's what I always think of when I, uh, when I, you know, when I saw Firefly. I always identified you with your Stargate character. I was wondering, what was your favorite part of working on the series? I had a few favorite parts. Um, I think the number one thing for me was that it, it shot in my hometown in Vancouver. And I got to spend almost four years at home in my own bed with a regular job. It was the best. And it's funny because that's what I wanted. Um, as soon as I wrapped a job, I just, I said out loud, I just want something to fall out of the sky um, that shoots in my hometown for, you know, a good like three, four years, something really easy, really fun, something sci-fi, and the phone rang. Literally, I manifested it out of nowhere. <laughs> and they offered me the job. It was crazy. Um, my second favorite thing in all seriousness was the food. <laughs> we had the best caterers in the world, Steve and Anthea. And Steve got to know me very well. He's like, she's a good eater, that one. Um, he would make me these breakfast sandwiches every morning. And your call times are quite early on, on shows. Usually the crew call time is 7 a.m., so we get there at 6 a.m. to start going through hair and makeup. And it got to the point where I would go into my dressing room and a, a breakfast sandwich would be waiting for me. And it was, it was just, like, it was so, I don't know what he put in there. I started calling them crack sandwiches because <laughs> they were so addictive. I got Jason Momoa on them. He would have two because he's like a Neanderthal. And <laughs> David Hewlett was obsessed with them. And then we all slowly started gaining weight. <laughs> and, you know, we're in the same outfit every day. It's a uniform. So I think we each had two or three uniforms just going in rotation. <laughs> and I remember going to the wardrobe room and I was like, okay, girls, we've got to stop putting my pants in the dryer. They should really be dry cleaned. And they were like, we have been dry cleaning them. <laughs> and Anthea was this amazing um, pastry chef. So you'd go through this whole long buffet line of the most glorious food. And then at the end of the line, there would be this insane cake that Anthea decided to whip up. And it would be, you know, like a five-tiered marshmallow chocolate cake, and like, it's free. You're not gonna say no. <laughs> so I just ate my face off for like four <laughs> years. You can see as the seasons go on, David and I were like mm -hmm. It was great. Well, thank you very much. Hello. Hi. I just have a request. Um, can we move that mic stand back a bit? Because I'm sitting on the end over there. Which one? Really, this it's, one? Yeah, because it's really Watch blocking, me. blocking my view. <laughs> you need the view, honey. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. How are you guys? Everybody good? Okay. You want me to move it? You guys just want me to walk around. <laughs> you pervs. Would you like me to move the table? <laughs> um, so my question is, um, in the comics, it's revealed that Zoe is pregnant with Wash's daughter. Um, sorry. <laughs> what do you Oops. think? Um, also, Wash dies. Sorry. <laughs> Do 
you remember when they um a quick little story. They they uh, I don't know if you guys know this, but they started putting Serenity back in the theaters. Uh, I think back in August, um, and we had Serenity play um, on two consecutive Mondays, I think, in Vancouver, and uh, we bought tickets and snuck in <laughs> and went and sat, you know, near the front because uh, Mark had never seen it on the big screen, and I don't think you'd seen the movie because when when Wash dies. Everyone gasps in the crowd, and Mark goes, Wash dies? <laughs> and I was like, you told me you saw the movie. <laughs> also, a long time ago, we were at a convention when we were first dating, and someone had a Jane hat. And I was like, oh, see, look, that's, that's, a, that's a Jane hat. You remember Jane from Firefly? And he goes, oh, yeah, which one was she again? <laughs> Just outed. <laughs> yes. So my question is, what do you think Kaylee's relationship would be with the baby on the ship as they grow up? I, I think she would be amazing. She, she'd be a great big sister. You know, she, she was that way when she wasn't terrified out of her mind with River. Um, she has a maternal thing in her. I think that's very strong. She's got a really um, strong feminine energy to her. So I think she'd be great. Great babysitter. Thanks. Thank you. Oh, look right in my forehead. This is good. <laughs> Hi. <clears throat> I'll give it trouble for go. someone else here. Uh, first, um, welcome to Nova Scotia. Thank you. Hope it won't be the only trip. We have uh, a lot of good restaurants, a lot of great oh, food. Oh, I know. A lot of microbreweries. That's what, that's what I hear. And wineries. And wineries. Well, I went to you one wine bar last night. I went to a wine bar called Obladi. Obladi, yeah. It's great. I, I have two questions. I can do that. I'm a cripple. Look it up. <laughs> uh, first question is, it's a great series, but it's getting a little old. Do you get tired of at being asked fire, fire questions or... No, no, I don't. Good. The only one that makes me go, oh, God, is when people ask me if there's going to be a season two. And I get it yeah. often. Still, I mean, it's been 10 years. Um, people are like, so when's season two coming on? And I'm like, really? Really? Okay. Um, but for the most part, I mean, maybe because it was so short-lived, who knows? It, it has nothing but um, positive memories associated with it for me. Mm -hmm. um, so it's something I'm very happy to live over and over again. Okay. Second sort question, uh, even as a heterosexual male, I have a big pro crush on Nathan Fillion, <laughs> and still do. Uh, what was it like to work with him? You seem like you'd be a fun guy to work with. Nathan is insane. <laughs> he, uh, he'll do anything for a laugh. He's a huge goofball. Mm -hmm. um, he doesn't take himself too seriously, which I love so much. And I found, especially um, coming onto a show, you know, as a guest star or somebody new, like in Stargate, um, usually uh, the the lead actor, the the person that's at the top of the tier, sets the the precedent and sets the mood a lot of the time. So if you have a jerk um, who's a star of the show, it just brings everybody's mood down. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> People just tiptoe around a lot, and it can, you know, make the experience less than enjoyable. And Nathan has this great energy. He's very grateful. Um, he's super fun, and he was the kind of guy that would say hello to the guest star and make sure they knew where craft service was and the bathroom was, and you can hang out with us at lunch. And you know, he was just he wanted everybody to have a great time and take that away from them. Mm -hmm. um, he's still very, very close friend of mine, we were at his house last weekend. Uh, he <laughs> texted me and said, I went to this crazy haunted house last night. I think you should fly down. And I was like, really? And he was like, yeah, why don't you just come down next weekend? We'll go to this haunted house. So I said, Mark, do you wanna go? Yeah, okay, let's go. <laughs> so we, we went down to LA and, and had the most bizarre <laughs> experience at this haunted house. It was, it was an interactive haunted house. So it takes place in, a, in an old church, which is creepy enough. And all of these actors are throughout the church and um, you basically have to interact with them. So there's a lot of improv and you have to solve this you know, 
mystery, this ghostly mystery, basically, to get out of, of the haunted house. And Nathan, being Nathan, has this very odd circle of friends. Like, I'm always, you, he'll throw a party and, you know, just the weirdest cast of characters will, will be there. I don't know where he meets these people. So we get to this haunted house with Nathan, and we meet up with his group of friends, and Seth Green is there, and Macaulay Culkin. Okay? So I want you to picture me and Nathan, and Alan was there as well, um, Tudyk, uh, and Mark, who's not an actor, okay? Mark's a scientist, so he doesn't do improv. <laughs> and Seth Green and Macaulay Culkin going through this haunted house, okay? So we're in a room and these actors are coming up to us going, we need to find the other half of the cipher to give to the Dark Lord. And Macaulay's like, where is the cipher for the, and you know, and we're all like, like it was, the, it was like a weird dream. <laughs> and we looked at each other at one point and Mark was like, I just I feel like I need to wake up from this. Like, it was so strange. But that's Nathan, he just has all of these, these weird people, <laughs> random, you know, celebrities. Um, but it was great, and he's su such a good pal and extremely generous and, and a very amazing host. Um, and I, I just love him. I love him a lot. He's like my, my big brother. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And during one of your signing sessions, I'd be honored if you sign my chair. Absolutely. Thank I would you. love to. i right. would be my first chair. <laughs> I've signed some weird stuff, you guys. <laughs> stuff you wouldn't believe. I signed a boob, and then she got my signature tattooed on her boob. I'm not kidding. Oh. It was awesome. <laughs> Is your name on anyone's boob? No. <clears throat> I'll call.